This is a $5 soccer ball from Walmart. How good is it? That's what we're going to talk about in today's video. What's going on guys? Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you a Walmart product review. Now this was fairly unplanned. I was walking through my local Walmart, actually doing some grocery shopping, happened to walk past the sports section and they had a bin full of these guys. Soccer balls made by Tectonic for only $5 each. I ended up buying two, mainly because I was really, really curious at how good a $5 soccer ball could possibly be. The cheapest ball you can get from a brand like Nike or Adidas, which is where most people buy their lower end soccer balls, is gonna be 20 to 25 bucks. So considering that this is a quarter of the price, I wanted to know if it was worth the $5 at all, how it compared to the low end Nike and Adidas balls. That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. So if you wanna learn more, stick around. Also, if you guys enjoy Walmart product reviews and you want to perhaps see it turn into a series on the channel, be sure to let me know down below in the comments or support the video with a like. If enough of you guys want to see it, I will make this happen more often. Anyways, let's go over all the details of the ball itself. So $5 at Walmart, you can see the ball features a standard 32 panel design with the hexagon shaped panels and all those panels are attached by way of stitching and typical of what you'll find on lower end soccer balls, the panels are stitched together and the quality of the stitching is less than stellar. I would say this is below average in terms of the quality of stitching that you'd get on most low end Nike, Adidas, Puma, major brand soccer balls. So you can see there are quite a few imperfections. Some are almost perfect. Some are not so great. You can see that's not very good right there. But again, what can you really expect for the $5 price point? As far as the material of the panels are concerned, it's got a firmer feel to it. There's really no padding to this panel material, but it also is very, very thin. So the ball itself has almost like a balloon type effect to it. It's very, very lightweight with kind of like a harder shell on the outside, which makes the flight path of the ball not the greatest, something we'll talk about in just a second. The ball itself is relatively round and really the best way to test the roundness of a soccer ball is to throw it up in the air and kind of watch this spin, which is difficult to do in such a small room because I can't throw it high enough. But for the most part, the ball is relatively round. Once you start spinning it quickly and it starts to wobble a little bit, that's how you know it's kind of warped. And the ball is kind of warped. But again, it's five bucks. What can you really expect? Other things to note in terms of the construction of the ball is the valve, which you can see right here, which is not the most clean finish. As you can see, it kind of sticks up relatively high. Although the second one that I bought, the valve actually sits pretty much flush. So again, that's something that's just inconsistency in terms of the manufacturing. And you will see right near the valve as well, that it does let you know where the ball is made, which is made in China. So join the club, not really too far off from what you'll find from balls from the bigger brand. So that's not really a big deal. To me though, the quality is not the greatest, but again, it's $5 at a Walmart. What are you really expecting? Aesthetically, the ball doesn't look particularly premium. It is made by Tectonic, that's technically the brand name, but you also have to keep in mind that this is actually a made for Walmart product. So Tectonic might not actually be a real brand. It might just be a name that someone deemed as cool sounding to put on a soccer ball that would only be sold at Walmart. So take that for what it is. The graphics themselves, you can see they print it on the actual panels and then the panels are stitched together, which is the normal way of making a soccer ball. But you can see how all of those graphics connect based on the consistency of the panels, which are very inconsistent, means that you have some rough edges. The panels don't always line up. That one actually looks pretty good, but look how bad that one is. Uh, so the graphics on the ball, I don't think they look bad, but you can definitely tell that this is a $5 soccer ball. So you're definitely not gonna be fooling anybody based on how it looks. As far as performance is concerned, I can't say that I was surprised with how this soccer ball felt and performed in general. It does feel like a $5 product, if I'm being 100% honest. Now, I haven't kicked one of these around since I was a really little kid growing up playing soccer. Everyone's kicked around their fair share of really cheap low-end soccer balls, and this really reminded me of that past experience going back to when I was seven, eight years old. So what this really feels like is kind of a balloon style soccer ball. It's the best way that I can describe it. The outside panels, like I talked about a little bit earlier, are firmer even when the ball is slightly underinflated. but the inside bladder, I'm not sure what type of material it is. It must be super, super thin, because the ball itself is so light. I almost dropped it, but we're gonna keep it going. It doesn't weigh anything. It 
has this kind of floaty sensation to it when you kick the ball. And then even when you're juggling, you can almost feel the weight of the valve on the one side. It's not perfectly balanced. I showed you a little bit earlier had the how the ball is slightly warped even from brand new. And honestly, it's just not a great experience. It functions as a soccer ball. So for $5, you are getting that. But if you plan at all on practicing a lot or playing a lot or putting any kind of serious time into this particular sport, I definitely would recommend spending more than $5 on a soccer ball. When you shoot a ball like this, it does have this kind of unpredictability to it. It's very much affected by wind because of how light it is as well. But it's one of those balls that when you kick it, it just wants to rise and rise and rise and then eventually just kind of drops almost completely in a straight line down. It really doesn't have that kind of arch, kind of consistent flight path that you would expect from a higher end soccer ball. And when I say higher end, I'm talking $20, $25 from a brand like Nike or Adidas. So not necessarily a super expensive ball. It just feels really cheap. This is what I expect when I buy a $5 soccer ball. So if you had the expectation that this was going to be as good as the 20 to $25 Nike and Adidas balls, unfortunately it's not, it's actually not even close. So would I recommend the Tectonic $5 Walmart ball? The simple answer to that question is no. It's just not a very good soccer ball. If you're gonna be spending any serious amount of time practicing or playing this game in general, investing in a better, slightly more expensive soccer ball. And I'm not saying to spend 150 bucks on a match ball, although those are very good, but if you have 20, $25 to spend on a lower end Nike Adidas ball, it's gonna offer a much better experience than this will for five bucks. With that being said, it is only $5. And in terms of practicing skills in general, this still will allow you to do that. It's still a round ball. So there is some merit to the $5 low cost that you're paying for something like this. I wouldn't necessarily buy it as my only ball if that's what I'm gonna be practicing with all the time. But if you want a ball that you just wanna try out, you have $5 to burn and you wanna have a little bit of a fun time, maybe this is something to buy. Or if you just want a soccer ball or two that you can throw outside, leave in your backyard, don't have to worry about it too much because it's only five bucks, then again, maybe this is something for you. But if you're looking for a serious soccer ball to do a lot of practicing with, probably not the best option. Anyways, that's it for my review of the $5 Walmart soccer ball. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to support it with a like. If you have any questions for me at all, leave them down below in the comments and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. If you have any suggestions for other Walmart products you'd like to see reviewed on the channel, let me know down below in the comments. I'll take a look at everything you guys have to say. If you're not subscribed already, be sure to hit that subscribe button for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear, including Walmart products here and there. Uh, all of my social media information linked down below in the description as well, so be sure to check that out. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching. Just a piece of advice, never juggle a Walmart ball with any white shoes. I just ruined my white Ultra Boost. You can see that red stain right there in the middle of the toe. I thought it would be a fine idea to juggle the Walmart ball a few times in between takes. And look what happens. I completely wrecked my shoes. Hopefully I can get that out, but... That's what you get for five bucks.